The following is an unpaid preview for a game seeking funding on Kickstarter. The product seen here is a work in progress and is subject to change during the duration of the project. Hey everyone, it's me, Ferdinand the Carpet Sacker, and here with my good friend, Matt. Hi! Yeah. <laughs> and we're here to preview the expansion to Unfair. Yes! Um, it didn't take them too long to make the expansion, right? Like, like, well, they have a lot of expansion. I mean, I've seen like their play, the playtest box. Yes, yeah. yeah. They have like everything from A to Z, and maybe possibly more. Wow. Yeah, That's but crazy. it's been two. The I believe the end of two thousand, the end of the summer two thousand sixteen, since Unfair um, mm -hmm. was kickstarted and it came out in the spring of two thousand seventeen, and now finally we're here back in the summer of two thousand eighteen, and they are. It's on Kickstarter right now. Please. Be sure to check the link down in the description below of a uh, way if you'd like to support their funding on kick on, on the unfair expansion. Yes, it's yeah. so good. I love this game. And you have to be involved inside it, uh, of uh, the Good Games Publishing because you are a playtester, right? Yes, I, I was. I was chosen to be a playtester. That was cool. Um, I, yeah, I was really involved in um, mm -hmm. the first and second round of playtesting, but work got really busy, so I wasn't really uh, yeah. playtesting that third so, time. So. And I'm involved by actually doing the tutorial for them, and it's probably one of more, uh, more one of the more popular I tutorial. Know. Yeah. So no more print and play for me. Like I could just <laughs> use this this one. Uh, yeah. that's already. Cut I mean, out I still remember. Me. I remember me like when they were still doing Kickstarter. I was like, oh, this is not looks like an awesome game. It has awesome art. I love the theme. I bring it out, and we loved it. <laughs> yeah, the theme is so good. It's not like. I mean, no offense to zombie lovers out there, but I just I I'm just tired of the zombie like post apocalyptic mm -hmm. kind of genre mm -hmm. this was very light and nice mm -hmm. yeah great. i love that you know you're building up you're also upgrading it too mm -hmm. i mean i mean you don't see a roller coaster upgrade all the time but it's still i think it's a pretty cool thing i can't think of another like roller coaster type or like theme park type of game that's this theme <laughs> well there, there, there are there are some there's some okay. out there but you know for this like I've been a big fan of Roller Coaster Tycoon for many, many yes. years. Many years, like in, since the what, mid '90s, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been playing that. Go, gone through all the scenarios, including the expansions. Um, but I love that, and you know, now you're actually just more, more the manager instead of you know the designer and that. So, but you have to watch out your competitors and the city itself, right? <laughs> yes, I know, and I love how this game is just so smart in the way it was designed. The artwork, from the artwork to the little Easter mm -hmm. eggs and the um and the uh. The flavor text too, yeah. just very de well detailed. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and go in depth with one with each of the decks. So there's, there's what aliens. We got. I'm gonna cheat here. Um, B movies, dinosaurs, and, and Western. westerns. Yeah. So, cool. Let's go ahead and check out. I think westerns first. Yes? Yeah. Let's start with western. All right. So we have western. Western's a cool one. I think it's also the easiest to get into. Out of all, out of the four yeah. new ones, yes, yeah. definitely. It's very. Okay. Like, easy for new players to kind of get mm -hmm. into. Well, first of all, we got a 3 in attraction, 5 in blueprints. I mean, that's a lot of blue, blue print, print, blue, blueprint points. points there yes. Uh, some you know, good coins in unfairness. So I think, yeah, I think the unfairness is, you know, you're not really hitting a lot of other competitors out there, right? Yes. Um, so in the event stack, the um, Western has bank robbery, which is pretty cool because you... For the whole park step, you can count as much mm -hmm. the the coins that people spend for various things, and um and half of that you gain at the end of the at the end in guest steps. So that's pretty. I mean, I wouldn't say it's unfair, but it definitely it's like it makes a real big advantage if you're anticipating people. Um, you know, that's a turn. Yeah, yeah the, you know, they're building their super attractions. I, I remember during the playthrough, actually, Cat was the one who played that first. Right? Yeah, yeah, and I'm like. Man. Of course he's going to play that first. We, we need to That's build stuff huge, on the first turn, yeah. Such a huge advantage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the the, this, the, um, the super attractions here. We got the Lost Dungeons Mine. I got this. I got this one played. Mm -hmm. and, did you use it? Oh, yeah, I do. I did use it. But I, it was kidding. Oh, yes, I remember. Out. Yeah. But this one you want us out as early as possible so you can get all that stuff and actually just grab all the... Um, the what the quality upgrade. So here we go. Once per event set, you may build a quality upgrade for your handy... Um, from your hand immediately for free, or search the park deck, uh, discard pile, and choosing the quality upgrade. Reveal it and put it in your hand. So that's pretty nice. Did you use this with the special alien quality? You can't. 
you can't. Yeah, because you cannot upgrade for, for, for free. free. Yeah. Okay. So that the, the alien quality found in the alien deck. Can I never got a chance to do that. Yeah, so you can't. You can't. Know. It has to be bought with alien. Alien influence. You, yeah. Yes, but otherwise, this is a really cool one, especially with um uh -huh. with so many blueprints that need qualities. Mm -hmm. Like throughout, even in the base game, you have blueprints that say you need a quality, and so yeah. Also, also a lot of rides and blueprints will ask for quality as mm -hmm. well. And as you can get pi paired out with the, I think the vampires because the vampires right. has the highest, I think, quality out there. Right oh really? Now. Oh yeah. Other than four. alien right now. Yeah. The four, uh, yeah. it gives four stars okay. premium. Um, the Deadwood Express, I personally like. Um, if uh, you get to shuffle, uh, cast aside the market, wipe the market, and then put in four, uh, uh, refill it from the park deck. Um, and in, if you see a if you see a staff member there, mm -hmm. then you get it for you get to recruit it for free. If you hit it, great. If you don't, just having the um, because it doesn't take an action, having the opportunity to see more cards that mm -hmm. are not in your hand, and you just you know, go through the deck as get, fast. Yes. Yeah, because some, because that dreaded moment when you have like you know the dumpster diving, yeah. and then guess what happens? The deck gets reshuffled. Yes. Yeah, and I hate that. <laughs> it's just it's such a good advantage to see more cards and have the opportunity to find exactly what you need, especially if it's like a three three of a kind or or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Uh, four. Okay, so uh, we have some of the attractions. What's nice about these attractions, and most of them, there are panoramas, but the panoramas are not fixed. They are. They can just. They loop around in any, any order you like. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a new symbol out there that you, when you put a panorama, it can just keep going in one way. Right. And what's cool about, um, what's cool about Western is that. Their panoramas, you don't have to put in a specific order. You just have to stick them mm -hmm. together. You can mix them up. Um, I don't believe that... I think that um, something about their point value is not the same as the other panoramas because it's, e it's easier for easier? them. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, but the panoramas are more important when you're playing with the B movie instead. Right. Yeah. So, because you're rescoring with panoramas, and they have to be in the Pacific order. I remember yeah. in the in the play testing, I was like, I was really advocating for the panorama mm -hmm. um, scoring to be a global effect because I think it's just it's just something that I didn't. I felt like you know. Everybody could just try it for even if B movie wasn't there. It's the mm -hmm. cool little like asterisk well, to your win. Well, the, well, with the B movie now, which what we're talking about later is that it it does pump uh, bump up the chances of you actually scoring. Right. Yeah. yeah they they help that a lot. That was something. Okay. Well, you know, you never know. It could be a, a game changer card too. You know. Oh, that yeah. that. Um, I mean, they could they could have just added in that if they want to. Yeah. Oh, that really. That yeah, really yeah. Cool. Like you know, this is like off to the side. Now you can score four. Panoramas, panoramas, but it won't be maybe as great as if you were playing B movie. Yeah, maybe they have like a lower yeah. point value yeah. when you complete them. Okay. We do got the another staff member here. There <laughs> actually is two really great staff members. There is the gunslinger, and then there is the ride engineer. I believe the ride engineer. Oh. Yes. Well, the ride engineer is what an upgrade from your hand for free. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. During the vet step, you can upgrade onto a ride for mm -hmm. free, which is which is. But she's really expensive. Late. She's like fifteen, 15 coins. Yeah, fifteen, 15 coins. I think that's just under the my favorite staff member, the personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that one. But well, gunslinger is pretty great too. Yeah, so it says once per event step uh, in intrusion, you may choose a staff member in any park. Dismiss the chosen staff member if possible, then dismiss this staff member if possible, and shuffle all cards dismissed into the event into the library deck so you may see them again. Mm -hmm. And that's um, that's a great combo with uh, Deadwood Express, that super attraction I was talking about before. Here it is, mm -hmm. by the way. There you go. Oh, there's another <laughs> card. It's a another card there. that we were looking for earlier. <laughs> um, because you can use the Gunslinger effect, it's going to go back into the deck, and then hopefully you'll see him again with that... Um, with that mm -hmm. market wipe and search for a uh, staff member so you can yeah. possibly get him back for free. Okay, and from the other one, because Western is a very, you know, when we think of Western, vast, great, mm -hmm. unclaimed, right? right? You got the vacant lawn here. Yes, <laughs> so good. I think in our, um, in our, practice or playthrough video uh -huh. i tried to use this one only to realize that i couldn't really <laughs> so what's, build my second super so this is a development so it doesn't take any space in your park mm -mm. so it, it g upgrades your park limits so you get the gas gas capacity of plus three super attraction plus one so you can get the other one because you, you can see you can see in the gate super attraction you must have one right yeah and then total total attractions plus one so you can get up to six 
attractions in your park and you can actually maybe even score for like maybe two panoramas maybe two right right <laughs> and okay. you do have that potential yeah but you can only have one of these in your park oh well <laughs> yes, but i mean even having like the the potentiality for having a second super attraction especially when you have something like um this western this western city event where you can build an attraction by paying half of it and as long as you play it you know closed uh that saves money so you can but have that super attraction later in life get this vacant lawn by by your other one when you're when you have the resources to so mm -hmm. um yeah well in some of the city cards over here we got yeah, you said the building subsidy right yeah which is by pay, paying half right it's so good yeah but yeah okay and then you got oh this, i use this one manual labor i use this twice oh and, to gain yeah. just six coins yeah, that's a lot of money though that is a lot of money so to save for the next Next uh, round, mm -hmm. um, any stuff you cannot play the bottom half of the event card. You can only yeah. play nice that yeah. turn. Yeah, um, gold thieves. You break the nearest um, quality upgrade to your park, um, and then to your park entrance. And then here's uh, permit violations that closes super attractions, mm -hmm. which is pretty like which is pretty wow. cool. Yeah, um, and then here. Uh, the Band of Outlaws, which is a which is, Firefly this is, this is the coolest. This is the coolest card in the whole expansion, <laughs> isn't it, right? Yeah, pretty, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed Firefly as much as everybody else. And um, yeah, this kind of um, not really forces, but encourages players to um, play the bottom half, which is where all that unfairness yeah. comes from. Okay. But, I, you know, from what we've seen, you know, Western is pretty, like, it's, you know, it's pretty... Nice. Nice, yeah. It's it's <laughs> nice. It's also, you know, you get a lot of stuff for a good amount of, you know, just for paying whatever, right, for this and putting onto your park. So lots of stuff in it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, the Western theme. I forgot that. Uh, for this one, it's the it's an upgrade for your, you know, your your rides. After you build this upgrade, you may immediately build a quality upgrade into the same attraction for free. And that doesn't have to be from hand. That could be from the market. You know. You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's great for trying to complete their biggest, the biggest blueprint, which is a you know altogether fifty point one, where the bonus is you need a quality upgrade on every single attraction. So that's kind of pricey, but if you can build it for free, why not? And then with the Western icon, you know, you're getting two icons on that attraction. All good things. Okay. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next theme. Sure. <laughs> All right. Our next theme to look at is dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yeah. I love this one. I was really excited about this one, especially in um, when you get the first, um, the base game. Yeah. You have those, like... The, for the Kickstarter, you get the yes. small little stretch goals. And one of them is actually two dinosaur park cards, right? I believe that was, yeah, it was Triceratops and an Electrified Fence. Mm -hmm. I believe they did change the game, that card, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was just a little preview. So, you know, I actually don't add those into my game. That's me. I know. Th I think you do, right? Um, Sometimes. Yeah. I like, sometimes, sometimes. And anyway, yeah, so for dinosaurs, it does have a little bit, uh, no, First of all, you you were adding back the dice from which is used from gangsters, as mm, well. Mm. So um, let's see. Additional rules requires two sided dice. Whenever an attraction has more than one dinosaur upgrade, uh, keep only one with the largest star value and demolish the other. So initially, it eats the other one. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. And there's several dinosaurs you can find over here. You got the uh, Ceratosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus, the Triceratops, um, the Dinosaurs. <laughs> Can't even pronounce some of these uh, dinosaur names. Velociraptor Dino and then the dinosaur. Dino Dinoicus. Velociraptor. Yeah. Please correct us in the comments. Yes. Below. <laughs> I'm, not, okay. I'm not Ross from France. Now I'm these can Arcanus. be added to any attraction and any leisurely things you can do, like a restaurant. Kind of funny. That'd be cool. Yeah. You're just dining next to the and dinosaurs. And what they what they all do initially is that they're they're. They get locked in cage and life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope not, though. I'm. I try to play this uh, with a combination of Western stuff in our playthrough. Mm -hmm. um, didn't do. Didn't do as well as I hoped. Okay. But um. But I mean, it was really fun. Um. I mean, let's. Oh, they all have different effects too. It's like for example, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. It says at the start of the event step. Roll two dice if the draw is six or less. Choose all attractions in your park, then demolish any dinosaur upgrade on adjacent attractions right yeah. i mean that's powerful like mm -hmm. 
it's will wreck your. But park. the thing is, it's eleven. It's cost eleven, but it gives you five stars. It's That's so a, cheap. It's, I mean, like I remember in Vampire, you have these three star these these three star attractions that were like. 10, 12 mm-hmm. coins. But here's 11 coins and you get 5 stars from it. But you do have to take care of them. That's why they have these uh, electrified, just, fences. Yeah, electrified fences. Abilities of animal upgrades on the same attraction and these upgrades are not active. Right. Yeah, so great. I mean, it doesn't. this just only adds a symbol for 8 coins, but it will keep your animals safe and safe from other animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the Ceratosaurus, um, if you fail the roll... Then you have to destroy your topmost upgrade on the same one, the Triceratops. Um, if you fail the roll, you close the attraction. So that's not, it's a nicer dinosaur. It's not that bad. Yeah. You can open, reopen that. Um, the de, Dino. Dinonicus. Yeah. Dinonic, Dinonicus. Okay. <laughs> I think that was the closest. Uh, if you fail it, then we move it to an adjacent attraction near to the entrance but if you can't if you happen to have it bigger or, a bigger dinosaur yeah bigger I mean, dinosaur or a lesser dinosaur, you're gonna lose <laughs> a dinosaur and then uh, we got the velociraptor uh roll two dice if the result is four or less close this attraction then move this upgrade to an open food outlet in your park or demolish this upgrade <laughs> that's pretty so cute. it looks for our food right yes and then you <laughs> finally we have the dinosaur which is like more of a wild card uh once per event step you may reveal the top card of the park deck until you find a dinosaur animal upgrade or you empty the deck. Use this card to replace the dinosaur egg, then discard this uh, upgrade, discard any unused card. So, you know, it's a six card, six coin. Most of these are pretty um, expensive. Uh, except yeah, for the you'll save though. some. You'll so. save a couple coins if you hit T-Rex or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um but I just love that they're all not the same effect. I think that would have been real kind of boring. Um, what I was hoping to see was this dinosaur on the cover, pterodactyl, or well, there's there's a little one. Lizard. There's a little one here. A little nod to that over here. Where is it? There, on the the pterodactyl. The yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, there. Yeah. One of the one of the uh, parks or this theme's roller coasters. Super nice. Anyway, and and one of the most unusual things about this park is they don't have really... Well, they do have some sort of showcase, but it's... It's not an attraction. Yeah. This actually... I thought that was brilliant the way they... um, Joel (laughs) and Kim and the rest of the development team for Unfair is that you actually replace your park entrance. So, um... So when you... you, Instead of, like, buying your super attraction, you actually replace your... Entrance into that, and it changes the capacity, your limits. Yeah, yeah. So if you start with the Mesozoic arches, you um, your increased capacity goes up plus ten, so from fifteen to twenty five, and then you can't have any more super attractions, um, and you can keep five attractions on it. Its effect kind of helps with the rolling. If you don't have a lot of electrified fences, you can um, you can re roll. Um, you can re-roll a dinosaur animal upgrades effect. Okay. Um, I per- I actually like the that pre- one. Prehistoric better. island. Yeah, this is literally you know it's like basically where they go to, right? Yes. Jurassic. <laughs> okay, so this one actually this costs twenty five, which is used, um, which is more than your when you're purchasing a super attraction. Park limits guess is now just ten, so you're not going to learn a lo- earn a lot of more uh, you know, coins. Yeah, your this. cap is a lot less. Yeah. With that, however, uh, total attractions for no super attractions, but it has your park has the base income of three coins per star. Your your attractions and their upgrade score no stars unless the attraction has a dinosaur animal upgrade. So when you're when you, if you're looking to play this card, which is a twenty five, which is more expensive than your common super mm-hmm. attraction, um, you're kind of telling everybody, okay, I'm aiming for dinosaurs, so. And I believe this is your base income. Is that just the income you receive? Plus, would you get the guest capacity income as well? It's your your base income is based on your stars. So okay. your star, like the one thing is that I wonder. No, no, that's fine. Forget what I said. Um, you would you would score your stars up to your capacity. Oh wait! So, oh, it's income. Ch- Three per star. Yeah, three oh, per stars. So that's that's actually thirty. Yeah, coins. your stars won't. Your attraction stars won't count. 
Unless there's a dinosaur okay. there. Yeah. But you gotta take care of your dinosaurs. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you have like T Rex, that's already half. I mean, Prehistoric Island gives you one. Mm-hmm. And you have T Rex, it gives you five. I mean, that's more than half of your 10 capacity. All so you, you already have a tractor yeah. already. That's that whole thing scores for that coin amount already. Yeah, you could really, I mean, depending on your blueprints, obviously, but you could really just play a Prehistoric Island with one attraction. And you're good. And you're good. You just got to build you need that at least five. You need yeah. at least five to just reach the, the actual natural capacity. Mm-hmm. You right. just need a, you just need maybe, uh, you know, those upgrades that have multiple icons, which we will see in mm-hmm. the alien pack. Okay. And also we got some staff members here that will help you out with some, um, your dinosaur I dealings. Know. We got the animal feed seller has the once per guest step, uh, yeah, gain three coins, extra coins for each animal upgrade on open attractions in your park. So if you want more money, that's way to go. And the dinosaur supervisor, um, he allows you to move a dinosaur animal upgrade to your park in your park to a suitable attraction in your park. And then you can, as an you know, there's a period there. So as another effect, you can reopen an attraction in your park. So that's mm-hmm. pretty cool. That's pretty cool, let's say, you know, with Triceratops here closes the attraction, you could just use his effect. Okay. Reopen it. Anyway, I'll help for the city cards over here. Okay. Well, here's the good ones. Mm-hmm. The city cards I didn't think I think I didn't think were too mean. The yeah. bad ones. So this one, I think we got this one I think you were playing dinosaur already, right? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, so this one is the and and investor open day guest steps that you have at least one dinosaur animal upgrade in your open attraction in your park roll two dice choose one of the die and gain equals to that die so here we have um, animal control permits for each animal upgrade in your park pay three coins or close its attraction now notice it says animal upgrade not dinosaur animal upgrade yeah. so if you if you know in jungle you have some tigers things, you got tigers you got tigers in there in the western you have a horse drawn carriage mm-hmm. so those would count as well okay uh, this one says you may discard oh that's your selection you may discard any number of park cards in your hand and draw that number plus one park card. that's pretty good yeah that's pretty handy if you have a hand in your like i don't want this <laughs> stuff can i get a, ch- a change um but yeah. Yeah. And well, I think um and probably the last one we'll cover is probably the two event cards over here. Yeah. One's one's quite unique because you can actually play it after hand during when you're you're not your dinosaurs are going crazy. Yeah, right? there's like there's only one other card like that and mm-hmm. that's the instant karma one. Yeah, so that one you just play and guess what your dinosaurs you change the practically change the die roll. But I don't think it's limited but to dinosaurs. For, yeah, it's you could use it for the mm-hmm. for the uh gangsters, gangsters yeah. that need the dice as well. Um, and, uh, here's another unique event card from the dinosaur pack. Intensive, stu- intensive study. You can roll two dice, choose one of the dice and draw an equal number of cards equal to its value from a single deck. So good. So <laughs> you can choose from park event and blueprint. You can choose one to keep and discard the other. This is a ama- that was such an amazing effect because you can use that to get I don't know your fourth turn your your fourth turn event card or um, dumpster dive or you're looking for that one specific blueprint that you know is in there. Um, just a great card, and then um, yeah, so just showcases mm-hmm. more of what dinosaurs. And did I cover the uh, dinosaur theme? No, you haven't. Okay, so this one is the dinosaur theme. After you build an upgrade, you may draw two park cards. If the attraction has a dinosaur animal upgrade, you may keep both. Otherwise, choose one to keep and discard the other. So, you know, if you don't, you don't find anything, you, you could, you know, just get the cards instead. But you can use it any time. Um, oh, it's only after you build it, unfortunately. So, right. take your chances for that. Uh, I think it's quite expensive. just to... for, for a risky yeah. thing like that? Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh that's dinosaurs. That is dinosaurs. What a great, what a great, great, great theme. I look forward to playing more of this one in particular. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on. All right. Okay, next up is B movie, and this is an interesting one I, too. I know. You know, this was my first theme when I play tested, mm-hmm. and at first I was like B movie. I wanted dinosaurs. I wanted alien. You know, <laughs> and I was like B movie. That sounds lame, but. I actually like this one the best because for a lot of reasons. First off, you get panorama scoring enabled. Yes. So, um, 
if you look at your, if for those of you who own Unfair, if you look on the sides of your boxes, you're going to see, you know, familiar attractions that are lined up right next to each other and they create this long panorama and you get extra bonus points if you happen to have them in the right particular order, mm -hmm. which is the key thing. You yeah. have to have them in the very specific order. It's actually a lot more difficult. And I remember this being kind of like a talking point. Go ahead and read, on the, the, forums. read the rules for that. So panorama scoring. When you build an attraction, you may build in any empty attraction space in your park. Instead of the next available space, by spending three coins for each empty attraction space, you skip over in addition to building the space, which is really helpful when you have, you know, a third piece that you're like in the very beginning of the game three coins is actually kind of a lot mm -hmm. um so i'm glad that that the creators had a way to make it a little easier to put those together um but the thing is it can rack you up in points oh it could yeah i honestly think it's it's yeah, it's so hard to do, and yeah. like the point value, the points you get is kind of it's nice. It's 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 helpful. It's about the same as the same as getting a like a difficult. Oh, look at that. on the size. Yeah, for for the a difficult for the blueprint. ratings. Yeah, attractions three, blueprints three, coins three, and in unfairness is one. So pretty nice, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> pretty nice. Um, I think. There's just a lot of good things here. Um, one of the cool things about B-Movie is that you get a new attraction type, which is the store. Um, and for this store, you get theme the themed merch out uh, merchandise outlet. You get two coins generated, plus four extra coins for each theme icon on that attraction, which is so cool. Um, so you can just pile themes on it, right? What's, what was cool was when I was playtesting, I had this with Robot. And so you would have it, you know, robot was one theme, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna play, you know, um, and up robot, you got you get an extra free upgrade, right? Right. Yes, yeah. so you get to free update. So <laughs> you know, and then you have um, let's just go right into this B movie theme because the B movie theme is that after you build it, you get to copy the other themes on the same yeah. attraction. <laughs> so it's like you put in robot. You, you get, play B-Movie, you get to play, you know, you can play, play another, you play Vampire. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, you have three, three, uh, three themes on that store, generating a whole nice nest egg so for that's you. So 12 coins. So good. And so two coins plus 12 coins for all of those stuff, too. And plus those star values as well. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of other unique attractions in, from B-Movie, you also get the billboard. And... Yeah, this, this one, this one will help you... Build up your panoramas. Your panoramas. Yeah. Because it's it's only three it's only three coins and you yeah. get a star. Okay, and at, during the event step you could just break it and place that piece that you've been waiting to put there, you've been mm -hmm. waiting for. So that's really helpful. And then lastly, you wanna talk about this one, it's really fun. Oh this one, it's a shape shifting mm -hmm. thing. It costs a little bit, but uh, and cannot be uh, cannot add quality to it. At the end game, this attraction may be used as a substitute for any single panorama. Traction during panorama scoring. So yeah. all of these cool little effects helping you get those panorama scoring. So um, I think it's totally worth it. It's actually a lot doable now that you see mm -hmm. it. And the last thing that kind of helps you out there is this particular event card, which I think is so powerful. And for those of you trying B-Movie, this card is only a two of in the whole event deck. But um, I'm going to ignore the top part. It's um, I'm talking about backlot cleanup, where you can close your attractions and just swap them around for the turn. No. Oh, that's... So helpful, because <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to build my panorama the way I want to. And if you chance upon this, whoop. Yeah, and then... And then maybe you have some other effects that reopen them. Mm -hmm. So, pretty cool. Okay. Um, this set also comes with three staff members as well. Mm -hmm. um, we got the popcorn seller. We'll get five coins for each theater in your park. That's like the safari guy from mm -hmm. the jungle. For each laser one, you get five coins. So that's pretty powerful. Yeah, so that's the... And theaters are pretty common in mm -hmm. the game as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you got the night watchman. After you recruit the staff member, choose an attraction in your park. Event step, you may block any number of intrusions, events affecting from your chosen attraction. That's so good. That's great for because most of the red stuff, most of the red city cards are... Also, intrusions as well. Right. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, in combination with other packs, like, like let's say you're playing gangster and someone's trying to break your casino, you're like, no, thank you, my watchman's <laughs> got it. Or you're trying to steal my dinosaurs, my T-Rex, no, thank you. Yeah. You're going to sabotage my electric fence, and no, thank you. It's also worth six points for nine coins. I know, that's a lot of points. That's more than the, than the alien guy, the... Yeah. 
which we will talk about that later. Yeah. And then you have Pod Person, which is another defensive, um, defensive staff member, which can kind of redirect any incoming negative effects to other staff members to herself. Okay. So she's a dummy. Here's the funny one. I love this card though too. The acceptable quality. It's acceptable. It doesn't but, get to but, but get, 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 get this. Is it, it is a quality, but here's the effect. This attraction cannot have any other quality upgrades. <laughs> yeah. <You laughs> no card there's no there's no um, no stars for this. It is a quality upgrade. So if it qualifies for our blueprint then it qualifies, right? There's quite a bit of these, too. So co- combining this with Western, you mm-hmm. have quite a bit to choose from. Yeah. I I <laughs> thought it was funny, too. Yeah. So that's... Uh, oh, yeah. And the super attractions, Let's of talk course. about these yeah. super attractions. So Mystery Theater was something that... Um, um, did you did you see the new... Did you see the new uh, artwork for the Mystery Theater? No. It's so pretty. Oh, uh, I mean... Yeah, we got, we got... This is just a prototype for now. Are, right? are you able to get to... If I send, if I show you it, can you use it in your video? For um, you know, I'll just talk to them. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, but Mystery Theater was something that um, got changed quite a bit. Originally, mm-hmm. it was um, basically just draw event cards um, in proportion to the amount of themes it has without discarding. So it was like super powerful. You can get like three, three event cards right away. But now you get to you get to look through the event cards, event deck, um, the top. And pick one, and the amount you reveal is dependent on how many themes you have, which is really good. The event cards are really impactful; they're just extra actions in your in your repertoire, so it's nice. Okay, we got the. No, I have the House of Wax. Mm-hmm. Now, also note that these are a little cheaper than regular yeah. super attractions. These are eighteen coins, mm-hmm. um, and this one has the effect: you may use it in action to build an upgrade on this attraction. Or half the mark coin price rounded down if any park already has that upgrade. Mm-hmm. So you can just you just basically it's a ripoff. It's a great way to <laughs> to get some extra coins, especially if you can just hoard all those quality themes on there. Yeah, and this one and this one is actually part of the panorama in this in this particular theme. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's a middle panorama too. You can still score on incomplete panoramas, but they still have to be in order. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I'll take that. I'll take sure, you're gonna get the bad ones. Yeah, I think okay. One. Um, Wooden Spoon Awards. This is an Easter egg. Um, for those of you who don't know, I believe that's um, that's Nicolas Cage. I I don't know. It's a spoof off Nicolas Cage. I don't know for sure. Um, I particularly like these two. So we have stock footage deal, which is a, something else that helps you with those panoram to get those panoramas in. And then you have film industry incentives, which co- your cost to build on theaters and the upgrades for the to build on theaters is half. Yep. So I mean this mystery theater becomes a very humble nine if you can get it if you know, if the timing's right, you can get your mystery theater up really quickly and then, you know, build something really expensive for half that price. Okay. Really nice. I like this card. I love the art too. It's the great popcorn shortage. And you saw yeah. the, and you saw the, the staff member ready, the popcorn seller. Mm-hmm. Look at him, he's so sad. I know. <laughs> In there. So that's called close all theaters. That's basically it. Because you know, what's a theater without popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and we got some other ones here, license and fee. Injunction for each theme icon in your park, play two coins, or close the attraction for each store in your park, play two coins or the attraction. So basically, like, it's like a tax. Yeah, <laughs> especially for themes, for other themes that rely on on uh, that, on their own cards, like mm-hmm. Pirate, for example. That's really powerful, because people like to just yeah, support that one. Pirates is, I, was, I like Pirates. <laughs> pirates, is fun, pirates is a powerful one. Yeah. And then, then they got Studio Interference, choose an event card in your hand. All other players have chosen pass that card to the next player in turn order. So, you know, that's another, that's one you just have to pass along, right? Yeah. Like, As you can see, <laughs> B-Movie just has a lot, added a lot more to the game. It's just all very exciting stuff. Yeah. And it's a great complement to the other themes. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. All right. And finally, we go to our last theme. All right. Finally, we reach, I think my, I think one of my favorites in this one. Mm-hmm. Aliens. Aliens? Yeah. yeah. Aliens, yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, the well, let's talk about it. First, so, yeah, first of all, it, this is probably the most drastic change in the rules for for an, a theme in the game. I think yes, because it has its own currency. So, alien influence is the new currency, and it's um, so if it's on a price tag, you have to pay that much alien mm-hmm. influence. There's some um, 
attractions, I believe, and upgrades, upgrades that give you that alien influence mm -hmm. and effects from events and city events. Um, in the guest step, so it's just a currency that you get. Um, you, it may not be stolen from you, and you can't put it. It's not something that you can like um, steal from somebody else using a safe cracking or you know a safe cracking or something like that. And the cleanup step, if a um, staff member, if a staff member happens yeah. to have an alien influence, it goes back to the deck. Or it's dismissed. Yeah, it's dismissed so it's, and, and goes back to the deck. deck. Sorry. And then, then the alien influence, which is also currency, is actually worth two points each. Which is more valuable than coins. Yeah, but it's harder to obtain as well. Right. Yeah. You're not gonna get a. You can get a lot of alien influence. But you're not gonna get as much as say if you're playing gangsters. You get a lot of money when you're playing gangsters. Yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, checking the stats on this, you got attraction size five. They're pretty big. I would say it's pretty. Yes. Big. Uh, blueprints three, coins four, uh, coins, and I guess. Alien influence as well, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a different one. And then unfairness is five, and I would I probably would agree for that one too. Because you're you're you you can put alien influence on other, other people's, people's yeah. staff members, and yeah. they can just go away. Yeah, and and then you get to use them for a little bit, right? Speaking <laughs> of staff members, um, for those of you that got the Kickstarter pack, Alien Ambassador is in this one, mm -hmm. and it's the he's a really really friendly. It's it's a fun. Yeah. I, I, I really like him because he's fun because he, he gives you ten coins if you have the lowest amount mm -hmm. of coins. He and helps then, you out. And then if you have too much coins, he's gonna help the other guy I that know. has the least amount of coins. He's just he's sa he's yeah. like a um, savior of the poor the the poor poor man the poor man's yeah. uh, poor theme park. <laughs> So he helps you out yeah. a lot. Then you have tour guide. Well, he well, actually, and he's also five points at the end if you happen to get him. Yeah. Oh, and I do want to say that yeah. he costs zero to recruit. Yeah. You just grab you, him and yeah. place him in there. No it's, cost. It's ten coins. Yeah. It's he just ten get, coins. That's ten you. coins that round. If you and you know you could spend it more. Um, then you have tour guide, who gets um, coins for observe alien observation decks, which is an upgrade. Yeah, uh, so the for the observation platform, this is one of the ways you can get alien influence in there. It does cost ten, and it is an upgrade for your as a guest service to you or any of your attractions. So, but it's there, and it's there's quite a few of them in the deck, so it's easy to find if you want to start gaining alien influence. And then finally, we got the uh, alien um, symbiote, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, once per event step, and it's free too. Uh, you may pay one influence to choose a staff member in your park if you do you may use any ability they have that starts with once per up to twice this round that could i wonder be if you can do the um no i don't think it's a, never mind but um but yes doesn't give you any points but since you can use the once per effect twice i mean i can think of a, a few a few very powerful staff members that you could totally use that and mm -hmm. that's really that's just really really strong um let's see let's oh, super attractions so we have the planetarium which increases your guest capacity by 10 um and the star value is three stars for each alien theme icon in your park and now i know just probably thinking is that like okay well this one has an alien theme icon you know, how often can I get the other alien theme icons? Well, you have a... Aliens have a um, holographic emitter, mm -hmm. which counts, I think. Yeah, so here's the upgrade. Uh, holographic emitter. It does cost two alien influence. And then it has a question mark, which is a new thing in the game, mm -hmm. in which you can actually choose any of the themes you like, you know, in one of the letters. You know, be counting as towards that. Um, side note, is that only on the... Up the at scoring or just any time or any time it's required yeah okay yeah so you know that's any time you need this uh, a theme this question mark you could just say i got that one <laughs> and then let's say somebody's like oh is that a pirate theme you're saying no no not right now no, I, actually i think maybe just you just name it once because you got the little the i little... think it's whenever you can just you could okay it, anything well I'll, I'll put a note <laughs> okay anything no I, I think i was talking about this with my roommate and we were talking we looked at the rules and it was like anything when it's the rule state, whenever a theme is required, mm -hmm. so you could choose. Oh, so it's a wild. Yeah, it's, it's a, a wild, wild card. Okay, it's nice. Okay, well, well I'll clarify that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um. Oh, anyway, so uh, you already have yours right there, right? So yes, we already talked. We about got this. the mothership, and this one's gonna be quite a hefty pay because it's gonna be five alien influence. Once per guest step, 
If the park star total exceeds the guest capacity, this attraction gains alien influence equal to the excess amount. So you cannot remove alien influence influence until and um, game end. So that people are gonna start closing your stuff with this card because and it because that's points. That's two points for each extra star you have. That's really there. powerful. If you can, if you have that many stars, or you can decrease your capacity or something like the zombies. I would say it's gonna be pretty hard to put this one out because you got to get all the, the, the alien influence in there unless you're lucky with the, some of the events right i would say you're gonna probably play this at the second half of the game speaking of events we have and again two unique event cards i'm gonna start with yours mm -hmm. uh we got the replicator gain alien influence and then you may spend him to get four four coins for that so uh, it's i think it lessens the value a little bit because alien influence is two points at the uh the game Four coins. Oh, actually, it's equal, right? It's equal. Yeah. Because two coins equals one point at the end of the game, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And we got the mass uh, matter transfer to play this event. You must have at least one any alien influence. Choose an uh, upgrade in any park. Move it to the suitable attraction in your park unless the player pays a large amount of alien influence to block it. And then here I have, um, I'm going to just go over the top part. Advanced tech, you can play one alien influence to... Search the park deck for an alien card and put it into your hand, which I think is really powerful. Anytime you can yeah. fetch one this, specific card. This would be great, especially when you're going through doing blueprints in there. And it, and anything in the deck is always... Trying to search in the deck is pretty good. And now that you mentioned blueprints, Alien has the highest <laughs> oh, yes. like valued blueprint. Did you try to go for this one? I saw it. I like buried it, and I hopefully, and I was glad that okay. my get get friend this. Catherine did not see this. But yeah. I mean, the top portion is ninety nine points. I mean, you need a stellar portal, which I believe is a unique. It's is it a unique? I don't think it's a unique. Yeah. But you need an ultra premium quality holographic emitter, a gravity inverter, and a shield generator. And on top of that, if you can get that's ninety nine points, and for one point more, you can get the Xena Botanical Garden. Yeah, and you got the full alien collection right and, there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. One hundred points. That's why it's marked an insane. Yeah, you know yeah. that's super insane. I mean, like one hundred points. That's like trying to hoard two hundred coins. Yeah, but people will see you playing a bunch of alien stuff. This is kind of telling. I mean, like <laughs> if you people can see, if people know of this card and they can see what's in your park, and they're like, no, close everything so you won't break get everything. Break, influence. break, 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 break. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, let's talk so with the some of the upgrades here. Upgrade alien upgrades are of course you're gonna be you can pay for alien influence. with alien influence. Yeah. Yes, we got the ultra premium quality, which is like really nice. Really it's nice. five stars, but you need four alien influence to do. Mm -hmm. It's possible. That's pretty good. I mean, for points wise, no, but it's a really great if you have some extra alien influence you want to spin off and then get some extra stars for that what you're going to score for alien theme after you build this upgrade you may gain one alien influence so yeah so not only gives you alien influence per each turn you also get one immediately so you can spend something for that and what i think is very very <laughs> cool about this theme is that they have an upgrade that has three icons on it yep. so that's i mean that just that speaks to that attraction size rating of five because if you have this that's already three three more icons that's like a few more stages of points that your attraction is going to get it's really really power strong yeah and of course we already talked about the holographic meter which is i think one another cool card it's really cool yeah. especially if you need those you know i mean could you imagine if this you know on for B movie where you need uh, you know multi multitude of themes and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's cool all um, right we got currency exchange which exchanges your staff members for <laughs> some alien influence uh, isomorphic matrix which is another one that you have to spend any influence on but it will change your it will duplicate somebody's upgrade with this one so it's an upgrade that can change to anything mm -hmm. all right um, the city events are really you know the the good city events the nice ones the the fun fair city events are are pretty mild. They're nice. They're helpful. Getting an, one gives you an alien influence. One gives you influence, alien influence if um, for thing if you don't have ride attractions or for attractions that aren't rides. And then you get um, this one triples your money for empty attraction spaces, or like or I'm sorry, it just gives you two, mm -hmm. two extra money. Gives yeah. you two extra money for empty attraction spaces. That's kind of nice. Um, yeah, some some of the uh, for the alien 
the bad city cards, the unfair cards. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> demolish all observation platforms. Yeah, this is intrusion. So the yeah. resistance. Yeah, so that can be blocked with the intrusion thing. That's pretty easy to block, though. If you, I was, I think one of the game changers here was to spy on um, to actually know what the next card was coming up to. So I got actually in the intrusion block. Card, oh yes, one. yeah. I was actually ready for that. Yes, yeah. That was one of the. Oh, we're gonna get to that later, though, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Uh, alien politics is just basically half. You can spend uh, the prices for the alien influence is half, but no one can gain influence that time. And then alien displeasure, uh, which means that if your stuff doesn't have alien stuff, you have to close everything that does it. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. let's take a look at those game changers. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. And now for, uh, after we, we cover all the themes, let's talk about some of the Game Changers cards. Because some of them does, they did, well, game, change the game a bit. But it's great that more of these are coming out and that you can enjoy the game as you like it. Yes. I think they're great. Cute little, like, you know, what would otherwise be house rules. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, this is like the Ricky there. You can, like, here, here's a house rule you guys can, like an official house rule you can put in or not, right? I find the, um, the Dijini's Bargain... Um, you before you you start the game, each player will decide if they want, want all city effects to affect them or, or all none. city effects to not affect yeah. them. Honestly, I would probably vote yes. I will because, probably take the blue pill, right? <laughs> yes, because like sometimes those can you know they can really help you out, and then you have you know things like the fortune teller, which you can kind of just see into the future and prepare yourself that way mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Well, the th- you know, the thing is, it's like. The blueprint, the, the, not the blueprint, but the blue regular city cards, I think help a lot. Yeah. Putting out Especially a lot in more the stuff beginning. in the beginning. And I, we, you can dodge those red, uh, red unfair cards. Yeah, and later in the in game the when you have more resources, you have some event cards in your hand, you can kind of I, I, help, I do feel that out. I do feel that the red cards, the, the red unfair cards, they feel more slowing you down than just actually stopping you most of the time. Yeah. With the blue cards, because you're so... You have very little resources. Mm-hmm. It helps. And prescience, right? That's how you say that, right? Yeah, prescience. Okay. Well, that's what we played last time, where we can yeah. you can just see the next, next card. This is next card, up, so the you next can you card. can plan for that. So, I mean, for the playthrough we did, I just kept one card, one of the event cards, because I know it's coming up, so I won't get the the intrusion and save all of my alien observations for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one part of the pod, you just add an extra theme, and then you have building insurance, which. I think I definitely want to try mm-hmm. on my next play is that um, whenever an event would demolish an attraction or upgrade in your park, you gain a little token called an insurance excess token to block that event. Um, and and then, then during the park sub, you can use an action to discard the excess token. And you're th- probably thinking, why would you want to? Well, for each token is a negative 25, 25 points. Point. Yeah. Yeah. OMG, that's crazy. That's... So you you waste an action for that, and and each action in unfair is really really important. I I know, but yeah. I mean like sometimes someone's gonna break your stuff. Like let's say you're playing alien, you're trying to get that 100 mm-hmm. point thing, the 100 point yeah. blueprint. You're like, no, I'm just gonna no, like, no I won't. Save I probably, no, I do like this card. And if someone wants to play with me, I'll probably play with them. For my personal taste, I don't need it. I just don't need it because I can I can take the beating. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's there for the people that really go because I, I think you you have to re know some of the stuff in the game to kind of prepare yourself of like you know this is gonna happen, mm-hmm. you know or deal with it because that's the name of the game, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Some other ones that we actually I don't have for for this particular prototype is um on the omniscient, on the omniscient, right? Yes, omniscient. Which means you can you all actually knowing. look all of the city cards. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, this one maybe is okay for some people. For me, I won't play it because it's like I like the surprise. I like feeling uh-huh. like there could be a you know a. A thorn in my side or a wrench in my plan. Yeah, because for me, it's like you see it all spread out there and you're probably going to overthink stuff and I think that might slow down the game. But it's there if you want to play it that way. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's... I do like it that it's there, but I do like it that it's an option you can take. And the lunch special is a... You can play a much fuller game, but at a smaller time. 
Right. So it's gonna be. It's almost like the like the what your first date one for the first game, mm-hmm. but it's just basically you get you start with more with a bit more stuff, and um, and let's say combine this with open grinding and stuff. So yeah. So just this a push, but you can get uh, you play it in a few more round uh, less less rounds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a pretty cool one too. Right. And I think dude, I think we covered almost everything in Unfair so the expansion. Which, yeah. which theme are you looking forward to the most? I think Alien. Yeah, I, I still love B movie. <laughs> I just love that one so much. Yeah. I I don't know. Um, I'll, if I have the opportunity to score for Panoramas in the beginning, early of the game, I probably will take it. I mean, I think I haven't played with the the newer sets yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I play with the, with with one of the older pro- prototypes though. But, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. anyway, I do have to try it a bit more. And see how I like it still, but yeah. yeah. But I think aliens, especially getting the extra, the alien money, is right. the thing I like a lot. And like, you can oh look at this powerful thing. And I almost played the mothership. For yeah, that, that other game that we had. <laughs> I just um, yeah. I mean, these new expansions. Mm-hmm. I think from the base game, I hands down think gangster was the most powerful theme. Mm-hmm. And here, I'm really excited. What I I'm really excited about is that in this expansion we have some themes that could stand up mm-hmm. to you know gangster and even pirate and ninja who yeah. which all have really powerful effects. So I uh, I I think they said like now there's like over 200 combinations you can play with this with the extra themes I believe in there. It. Yeah. So wow, that's a lot more gameplay and stuff. I mean, I I I think I only played this with the stuff in it right now. Mhm. Inside, it. I haven't mixed, mixed in them. With in. Yeah, I really, yeah. I really want. I'm looking forward to the combinations. That, are really exciting to think about. Yeah. So yeah, this is great. This is one of my favorite. Games. This is one of your favorite games as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely one of my can't... favorite games. And I think we're we're always going to be playing a lot more unfair. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you for checking out for this preview of Unfair. Um, I mean, this this is a very thorough preview of mm-hmm. the game, but yeah, but I I'm I'm still having so much fun even after. Like over a year of playing unfair with it, and I think right now as we're you know this day that we're filming this, mm-hmm. the Kickstarter just went live. Yeah, it just uh, well, it's actually live today. Yeah, when we're filming it. <laughs> yeah, so get on there, fund, fund, fund. Yeah. Anyway, thank you anyway, and if you if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. We have lots of more reviews, the videos, uh, how to play videos upcoming. Yeah, and um, that's that's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> okay. But thanks, guys. Goodbye. And remember to keep on stacking games. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on board and card games. This is the Cardboard Stacker, and remember to keep on stacking games.